This is a wave. Sup? Easy to see, right? But what about sound waves? Little trickier. You need science, like the kind done by Aisha Lawry. Fig has more. What is a sound wave? Well, when the surface of a speaker, a bowl of spaghetti hitting the floor, or the vocal cords of an animal vibrate and push air molecules, it forces those air molecules to bump into other air molecules, which bump into other air molecules traveling out from the source in waves. Kind of like how water molecules form waves in the ocean. Loud sounds move more air, sending bigger waves. Soft sounds move less air, sending smaller waves. That's why things have different volume. But how exactly can waves of vibrating air molecules convey different specific sounds of everything from cowbells to cows? To find out, we're talking to engineer and educator Aisha Lawry, who knows a thing or two about how sound works. When I was young, I didn't know anything about engineering. One of my math teachers actually asked me if I knew what engineering was, and I had no idea. And she gave me the best simple definition that I still use to this day, is that engineers are problem solvers. If you've ever thought about how something worked or thought about, I can make this better, then you're thinking like an engineer. Today, Aisha is going to show us how waves of air molecules can create all the different types of sounds that we hear by literally showing us what sound looks like, starting with pitch. Pitch is how high or low a sound is. How do you change the pitch of a sound? Well, pitch really depends on how fast or slow the source of the sound is actually vibrating. We can actually see pitch with this. One end of Aisha's homemade device has a container for a speaker with a balloon stretched over one opening and a piece of mirror taped to it. On the other end, a laser pointer aimed at the mirror. How does the sound that we hear turn into the light that we see? Remember we talked about vibrations in air molecules? The speaker emits sounds, which makes the balloon vibrate and the mirror. And the laser just reflects off of that onto the screen. Wow, so we are seeing the sound. Exactly. <laughs> How about we try out some sounds? I'll do a low pitch one first. OK. Oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> All right, now you try the high pitch. OK. So faster vibrations create higher pitch sounds and slower vibrations create lower pitch sounds. Exactly. Aisha has one more demonstration for me and it involves sand. These are clatney patterns. So what's happening here is the surface is resonating sound waves. The sand is really showing us where the nodes and antinodes are. Nodes and antinodes. So a node really produces very little energy, which makes the sand come together and settle in one place. And an antinode has high energy, which basically makes the sand be pushed away. While a single tone will create a static clatney pattern, more complex tones will create beautiful changing patterns as the sound waves bounce off each other, moving the nodes and antinodes. So this shows us that sound is not just one wave. It's a pattern of waves that are bouncing off of one another. Exactly. So how is sound acoustics used in science? That's what's so cool about it. Everything that we learned today about how sound works, sound engineers use every day to improve the sound in music, the sound in movies, and also the sound in space like I did. There's a lot of noise in the space station. So I worked on a project with NASA to understand how to make it quieter for the astronauts to be able to get a good night's sleep. Thank you so much, Aisha, for showing me all of this and for teaching me that you can see sound. Sure. I think we should listen to some more. Sounds good. <laughs> Hey, it's Miranda Cosgrove, your favorite host of Mission Unstoppable. I'm the only host. 
And if you want to watch awesome STEM videos and exclusive Mission Unstoppable clips, just make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell.